Hi, this is Eric Sloof over at SentiPro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you how to configure a storage DRS cluster. So we know DRS from uh, uh, clustering ESX hosts, but within vSphere 5 it's possible to add data stores to uh, a storage cluster. So if you are going to log on to your vCenter server and you're going to host and clusters, you're in the wrong place because this is the place where you can enable HA and DRS. So when I'm clicking on settings, uh, you will see that HA and DRS are turned on. But this is not the place where you can configure storage DRS. For storage DRS, you have to go back to your homepage. And then click on data stores and data store clusters. And when you are at data stores and data stores clusters, you can create a new storage cluster by right clicking your data center and choosing for the option new data store cluster. You have to give it a name. Uh, and in this case, I will call it demo Eric Sloof. And we can choose for the option to turn on storage DRS. Then there are two possible levels of automation. We can do no automation. It means that you can uh, do the uh, perform the, the migrations in manual mode, or you can do a fully automated DRS cluster. There are also some advanced options, but you have to put them in by hand, just like with HA. So uh, the next thing is that you can uh, choose if you want to do iometric inclusion, enable it or disable it. You can choose at uh, which utilization space uh, migrations will take place to free up some space of the full data stores and at the amount of milliseconds with regarding to the latency. Okay. So, uh, then you can choose which parts are included into your cluster and I choose next and you will see all available data stores. So, uh, I don't have shared storage in my uh, laboratory environment right now. So, uh, I just choose some local data stores, but normally you have to choose for shared data source on the Fiber Channel Sun or iSCSI Sun. It's also not possible in this version to mix uh, NFS and VMFS data stores, so I leave this option unselected. I'm clicking on Next and my complete cluster can be reviewed. And uh, when you're done with reviewing your settings, you click on Finish and you will see that uh, the cluster appears right here, the storage cluster, and there are two data stores in this cluster. So when I'm selecting this data, this data store cluster, I can also add additional storage to the cluster, for instance this one, and uh, then there are three data stores in this cluster. When I'm going to this, the settings of this cluster, you can see that this cluster is enabled for storage DRS. We can see that the automation level that is selected is on manual mode. You can see that the runtime rules I've created during the initial configuration says that it's enabled for metrics. You can see the scheduling, and the scheduling is quite interesting because you can add your own schedules. And you can select the time of frequency that you want to schedule storage DRS changes uh, uh, the setting. So if you want to disable DRS or uh, uh, temporarily uh, don't want to uh, 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 do any balancing or, or that sort of things. You can create a task which will modify the settings and afterwards which will reset the settings to the old values. You can also create rules and rules are interesting because uh, there may be a possibility that two virtual machines both hosting databases and need lots of I.O are scheduled, are placed on the same data store. And with rules you can create affinity and anti-affinity rules. And you can say that virtual machines or VMDK files of virtual machines uh, may not be placed on the same data store. And these are comparable with the affinity rules uh, we know from uh, uh, DRS. You can say the hard disks of this virtual machine are not allowed 
to be placed on uh, the same data store. There are also virtual machine settings and the virtual machine settings are right here and you can select an automation level on individual virtual machine basis. So uh, at this point, SRS, SDRS automation, you are selecting the default for the whole cluster, but here you are selecting the automation level on individual virtual machine basis. So when this, di when this is done, you have fully configured your storage DRS cluster. You can go to uh, the summary where you can monitor uh, some parts like the amount of gigabytes used in your cluster. You can see which virtual machines are included. You can see the host and clusters and you can see the data stores. And there is a special new tab right here called storage DRS. And at storage DRS, you can see which settings are, uh, uh, are in place. And you can also see the faults and the history of your storage DRS actions. So this is interesting. You can track if uh, virtual machines are placed on the right data store or if there were any problems. The cool part is the performance tab where you can see uh, how much your disks are used, the amount of swap files. And in the end, all these data stores uh, should be equally loaded and also uh, should uh, be equally in the latency. So storage DRS will be noticed by your users uh, when you are creating new virtual machines because storage DRS also will uh, will create a recommendation and the recommendation means that storage DRS will advise you to place the VMBK files of a new virtual machine on a certain data store with uh, uh, the amount of free disk space and the amount of free latency. The tasks and events which can be monitored and the alarms and the permissions. So that's a brief overview of storage DRS. I hope you like it. Read the article because there's a lot of information in it. And Eric Sloof is signing off. Bye bye and have fun with storage DRS.